ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون brothers and sisters death is a constant reminder for the believer death reminds him of having a purpose death gives him hope death brings about fear death wakes up a person from the slumber of his own oppression death softens the heart and it puts istighfar on the tongue my brothers and sisters the angel of death doesn't care if you're rich or if you're poor he comes and he takes and he leaves those behind which he will come back for for another day and these people who are left behind after what the angel of death has taken they have to understand that what the angel of death has taken has left behind for them ahkam and rulings for them to follow with the deceased body which yesterday had a name and today has just become a corpse my brothers and sisters on the authority of Buraida ibn Husayb radiyallahu an in a hadith which has been reported by Tirmidhi and Sahih al-Albani Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said fazuruha fa inha tudhakkiru al-akhira visit the graves because they will remind you of the hereafter my brothers and sisters in the recent news we have seen what we have seen imam an-nawawi rahimahullah says in explanation of this hadith it is permissible for a muslim to visit the graves of the kuffar for this purpose meaning to remember death and this is a view which is taken by many of the scholars but from the adab also if you are reminded of death by looking at a non-muslim is that they must be in a state of istighfar they must feel uneasy about themselves and it's not for a believer and it's not for a believer to sit and watch as the kuffar a non-muslim deceased person is being carried they see it move and they feel nothing hence the ulama have mentioned from the adab of looking at a funeral procession of a non-muslim is that they are taking lesson for themselves and they are making istighfar in bukhari muslim when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was there sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said when he went past a group of people that had been punished before la tadkhulu ala haula al-mu'adhibin do not enter into a nation where his ruins are there illa an takunu bakin except if you are weeping and crying and thinking about your own mistakes and making istighfar fa innam takunu bakin and if you are not supplicating to allah for forgiveness and if you are not worried about yourself and if you are not crying fala tadkhulu alayhim then do not visit their ruins and do not look at the deceased of the kuffar la yusibukum ma asabahum so what happened to them what happened to you imam qurtubi rahimahullah in his explanation here he says if a person visits the graves of the kuffar or he sees their places of ruin then he should only look at them and visit them in the way that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has described here with istighfar with contemplation for himself and worrying that he could end up in the same state as theirs min i'tibar wal khawf wal isra these are the conditions that al-qurtubi has placed taking a lesson by looking at the deceased of the kuffar fearing for himself by looking at the deceased of the kuffar and hastening and not settling and watching and looking on my brothers and sisters there is an agreement from the scholars that the muslims are not allowed to attend the funerals of non muslims they are not allowed to watch them they are not allowed to wash them they are not allowed to shroud them they are not allowed to follow their procession and the evidence for this is when abu talib passed away a person who supported the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a great deal in fact there is no one if you look at the seerah that had a longer attachment with the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam than abu talib abu talib 
was close to the Messenger of Allah for a period of 42 years. When he passed away, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was sad. And he wept. And he was filled with grief. To the extent that some of the ulama of the seerah have said that this is Amr al this is the year of grief. With this, my brothers and sisters, we know that if a non-Muslim passes away and you naturally feel sad, there is no harm in that. But here, we have to detach rulings from emotions. Abu Talib passed away and the Prophet wasallam said, after he passes away, I will make istighfar for Abu Talib as long as Allah doesn't prohibit me. Not long after he said that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ayah in Surah Tawbah came down. مَا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُولِي قُرْبًا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ مَسْحَامُ الْجَحِيمُ He is not allowed for the Prophet or the believers to make istighfar for the disbelievers even if they are close relatives to you after you know that they have taken a path and chosen something other than Islam to end their lives so the Prophet وسلم, after this instruction was sent to him, after the death of Abu Talib, he made no dua for him. He made no istighfar for him. He didn't do any good deeds on his behalf, no burial and no shrouding. But there is a narration in Abu Dawud and Nasai that Ali and his son, Abu Talib's son, he came to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, there is no one there to wash him or bury him. All of the Quraysh, who said that they would support him, have deserted him. So the Prophet وسلم, says to Ali, Idhab fawari abak. Go and wash and shroud and bury your father. The Prophet وسلم, allowed it for his son, but he himself did not attend. It says in Fatwa al Lajna Daima that if a non Muslim passes away, it is not for Muslims to bury them. No burial, no carrying of the bear. Amalan bi taqalil al siyasa. This is because it's a religious ceremony and they have their religious practices and we have ours. Therefore you are not allowed to attend and watch or do things that they are doing or do things that you would do in Islam for them. But out of necessity that we learn from the incident between Abu Talib and Ali out of necessity if there is no one there to bury him, then the Muslim can bury him. But my brothers and sisters, we can't understand from this that Islam condones being disrespectful towards non-Muslims. Disrespecting others is never a sign of Iman. The Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith which is reported by Tirmidhi Amir Hassan Bayabani, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالْتَعَانْ وَلَا لَعَانْ وَلَا فَاهِشْ وَلَا بَذِي The believer is not someone who insults. The believer is not someone who curses. He is not foul in his words, no swear words. And he is not explicit and he is not harsh. With this, my brothers and sisters, what goodness is there in speaking about a person that has passed away, even if they are not Muslim? In actual fact, our Prophet وسلم, who was sent as a mercy to all of mankind, used to respect the deceased even if they were disbelievers. Sahal ibn Hunayf, he said once we were with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and a bear of a Jewish man was being carried past us. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he stood up. And the companions then informed the Messenger of Allah, he's not a Muslim, it's a Jewish burial, Ya Rasulullah. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaysat Nafsan, Alaysat Nafsan, is he not a human being? And this is how the Salaf were, my brothers and sisters. The Sha'bi narrates that a Christian woman passed away at the time of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's companions, for Shahada Ashab Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to that Christian woman's home to pay their respects. Abu Wa'il, one of the senior tabi'een, he said, my mother passed away and she was a Christian. So I went to Umar radiallahu anh, and he said, Irkab dabba wa sir amamaha. Ride your mount and walk in front of her bed. Not attending the funeral, but pay your respects to your mother. My brothers and sisters, there is a lot of mercy from a Muslim at the time of death, even if it is a non-Muslim that passes away. The ulama have said that it is permissible for a Muslim to give their condolences to a non-Muslim in the time of bereavement, to visit them when they are sick, and to console them when calamity strikes. The purpose is to make their hearts softer, to entice patience and to remove sadness. In Sahih Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, visited a Jewish family 
who had a very young sick boy, a Jewish family who had a very young sick boy. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, enters the home of a non-Muslim house and he encourages the son, the young boy to say La ilaha illallah. He was very sick to the point of death. He's saying to the young child, say La ilaha illallah. So the young child looks at the father, Jewish man, and he says to his son, Ati' Abu Qasim. Obey and listen to Abu Qasim, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This young man, he said, La ilaha illallah, and he died upon Islam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out of their home weeping, and he said, Alhamdulillah, alladhi anqadahu min an nar. Alhamdulillah, Allah has saved this soul from the fire. Ibn Qudama al Maqdisi rahimahullah, he said, Fa'ala hadha nu'zihim. This is proof that we can visit the kuffar. We can offer our condolences to the kuffar, and perhaps this will soften their hearts towards an Islam. In Musannis of Ibn Abi Shayba, Abu Dadda radiallahu anhu, he used to have a Jewish neighbor, and he heard one time that the Jewish neighbor was not well. So he went to visit him, and he paid his respects towards him, and he reminded him to be patient. When this Jewish man eventually passed away, he went to the house, the Jewish house, to offer his condolences. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the ruins connected to the janazah of non-Muslims. My brothers and sisters, death is real. It comes unannounced. And when it comes, people are often in confusion about its rulings, except for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was good for. So don't be confused in life. You will find certainty in the face of death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلُ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ غُرُورُ أقول ما سمعتم وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. My brothers and sisters, when one generation fades, the next generation is only going to get worse. With the death of a leader, we are replaced with another leader. When one generation passes, another one comes. And with death, there is fitna. And the fitna reminds the believer of how things can actually be how difficult things will become if they don't have Allah. In a hadith in Sahih Muslim, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas he was sitting under the shade of the Kaaba and people gathered around him. And he said, in advising the people that were gathered around him, he said, one day the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa delivered a khutbah. And in that khutbah he said the following, that there's never been a prophet except that goodness he guided them to. There's never been a prophet. If there was any goodness, he guided them to it. And if there was anything harmful, he warned them against it. And then he said in his khutbah, وَإِنَّ أُمَّتُكُمْ هَذِهِ Your ummah, this one here, جُعِلَ عَافِيَتُهَا فِي أَوَّلِهَا Its protection and its guidance and its goodness has been placed in the beginning of it. Meaning in the first generations. And the later generations will be afflicted with trials. And they will see things that they will reject. And the fitna will come. And the fitna will come one on top of the other. Each fitna becoming worse than the other one. And when the fitna comes, the believer will say, this fitna, this fitna is so severe, it's going to destroy me. But then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, went on to describe the state of those people who will come in the later generations. That fitna that he thought that was going to destroy him, it will go away. And another fitna will come. And this one will be worse. And the believer will then say, This one, no, this one, this one will destroy me. So the Messenger of Allah gives us a solution. 
if you find yourself in that generation. Anyone who wants to be saved from the fire and wants to enter into Jannah, then he should only act, he should only believe, he should only behave, he should not die except that he believes in Allah and the last name. And he should treat others in the way that he would like others to treat him. My brothers and sisters, this is the advice of the best of mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The truest, the most honest, and the most sincere that ever lived, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He left for us a sharia and rulings to follow. He left for us a sharia and rulings for us to follow, so that you are the one that will be successful. And he left for you behind prohibitions, so you are the one that doesn't get hurt. And he told us that things will get worse. And he cared enough for you to give you a solution. I am the one who is 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 أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجلنا من خزي الدنيا وآذاب الآخرة توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاء نعمتك وجميع سخطك اللهم عين علينا ولا تعين علينا اللهم عين ولا تعين علينا اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انكرنا لا ولا تنكر علينا اللهم اهدنا ويسر لنا هدانا اللهم انصرنا على من بغى علينا اللهم نفذ قرب المقربين وقد الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار بناتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة لكن عذاب النار عباد الله يذكر الله يذكره واشكره على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون